Okay class, so today we're going to be learning about feudalism and manorialism. These were some economic and political systems that developed in Western Europe after the fall of the Roman Empire. So if we start looking here, feudalism describes the relationship between the king and his nobles in medieval Europe. Manorialism describes the relationship between a noble and his peasants in medieval Europe. Feudalism was primarily political and military based, while manorialism was more economic and social. Okay, so some differences there. So feudalism is kind of more of this overall structure that emerges where you had kings who had a large amount of land and they had to distribute that land to different lords who would watch over it. And they would then have knights, you know, like knights in shiny armor who would help them watch over it. And then peasants and serfs who worked the land. After the fall of Rome, people needed protection from outside attacks. Feudalism and manorialism provided people with protection and safety by establishing a stable social order. People were bound to one another, so they were kind of attached to each other, by promises of loyalty. Everyone in medieval Europe had a role to play in feudalism and manorialism. So if we look over here, right, at this uh, social class pyramid, you're going to see the Pope and the church. They stay at the top, right? So remember, uh, you did that assignment already, right, learning about how much power the popes had in Western Europe. Then you would have a king or a monarch. Then you'd have the nobles or the lords. They would the king would split up his land to these different nobles. They would have knights uh, who helped, you know, protect the land. Then you'd have people like your merchants, your farmers, your craftsmen who lived on the land, worked the land, and then your peasants and your serfs. And we're going to learn about what a serf is right below. Okay, so directions. Complete the questions below for each of the stations. Make sure to read the directions for each station before you begin working. When you have finished all three stations, complete the final question. So, you know, obviously we're not real stations since we're not in class, but just to kind of give you a couple different ways of learning about it. So station one, life on a manor for the different social classes, reading. Directions, read through the text and answer the given questions as you go. So let's start this reading. In feudalism, you were born into a social class of people and generally stayed in that social class for your entire life. Working hard did not change your status. Your clothing, food, marriage, homes, etc., were all determined for you from birth, right? So you're born into it, can't change it. Kind of like the caste system that we learned about in India. As number one is factual. How were social classes determined? So why don't you pause to answer number one. Okay, the king. The king was in complete control. He owned all of the land in the country and would only allow people he could trust to lease land from him. These men were known as lords or nobles. So this is what I was talking about, breaking up his land. Almost like in America how we have a president at the top and then different states have their own governors who watch over it. Those are kind of like the lords. So lords slash nobles. Lords were wealthy, powerful, and had complete control of the land they leased from the king. The lords established their own laws, made their own money, and set their own taxes for the manor. In return for the land they had been given by the king, the lords had to pay rent and provide the king with knights for military service. Wives of the lords were responsible for raising children and overseeing the household. So number two is debatable, so you can choose a side. Do you think that the lords were necessary or needed part of the manor? So do you think you kind of needed this person in charge of the manor? So pause to answer that. Okay, are knights? Knights were given land by a lord. In return for the land, they had to provide military service when needed. They also had to protect the Lord and his family, as well as the manor from attack. Knights were trained from the age of seven and worked their way up to become a knight. Becoming a knight was marked with a religious ceremony. Knights were expected to be loyal to their church and their Lord, be just and fair, 
pay respect to women, and to protect the helpless. This code of behavior was called chivalry and had to be followed by every knight. So number three is debatable. Would you rather be a knight or a lord? Explain your reasoning using one piece of direct evidence. Right, so I would rather be a knight uh, because, and then your quote, or I would rather be a lord because, your quote. So pause to answer that one. Okay, uh, serfs slash peasants. The majority of the population were serfs. They worked the land and provided knights and lords with food and service. Serfs were not free, had no rights, and had to pay taxes. They were not allowed to leave the manor and even had to ask for permission before they could marry. Serfs usually lived in a one-room house with their whole family and farm animals. Some farmers were peasants. Unlike serfs, peasants were free. Peasants paid rent to the Lord in order to live on and work the land. Peasants had more rights than serfs. So number four and five are both factual from this paragraph. Which social class made up the majority of the population? So why don't you look back in here? You'll find a sentence about that. Number five, how is a serf different from a peasant? You know, I would look at kind of these last couple sentences to help with that one. So why don't you pause, make sure you can answer number four and five, and then press play to move on. Okay, so station two is a feudalism video. Directions, watch the Ed Puzzle video and answer the questions below in complete sentences. Make sure to write all answers on this document, so in here. You may need to pause or rewatch parts. So you're going to click this link. It'll open up to Edpuzzle. Make sure you're logged into your Harrison account or else it might not play. As you watch the video, it'll pause and it'll have these same four questions. Make sure you put your answers onto this document. Okay, so why don't you pause my video so you can watch the Edpuzzle and complete station two. And when you're ready, you can replay my video and we'll go to station three. Okay, so at this point, I'm assuming you finished your Ed Puzzle. You finished your four questions. And we're going to go to station three. Manorialism map. Directions. Examine the map and text by clicking the link below. Answer the questions below. So we're, we have some questions here, but we need to open up this link. So let's look at our first question before we even open it. Based off of the map, which social class had the best housing on the manor and which social class had the worst? So let's open up to this other link and see if we can find that. So we'll see there's a map, takes a second to load. It's kind of a big image. And there's little reading here too. A manor included a manor house, villages, and the surrounding farmland. Manors were in the country, far from towns. That meant that the serfs and peasants had to produce everything the people on the manor needed. Only a few goods came from outside the manor. So if we're looking at this map, we're going to see a couple different things. right? We see over here are serfs and peasants, right? and these are their houses. It says they grow vegetables and small gardens near their homes. Over here, sheep are grazing on the field. Over here, we see the village blacksmith, so kind of a craftsman. You know, here's the mill where they would turn this wheat into bread. We'll see the church. You know, remember, a church would be in every one of these places, right? The village church was built on a small piece of land that belonged to the Lord. And then we have kind of this big house over here. The Lord of the manor lived in a large stone house called the manor house. So this would be the biggest house. And then you have all these little houses. Okay, so for number one, which social class had the best housing? You wanna look for who lives in this castle, looking place. Who had the worst housing? Think about who lived in these little houses, right? The peasants, the serfs. Okay, number two is conceptual. So you're gonna to have to think beyond the map. Why do you think that churches were part of the manor? Explain your thinking. 
right? So again, every manor would have a church. So think about the document that you completed on Tuesday and or Wednesday and thinking about why would a church be a part of every single manor? You would not find any of these little manor towns in Western Europe without a church. All of them had a church. Okay, so why don't you pause, think about that. Why would they all have a church? What did you learn about the role of the church that made it so important? Okay, once you've answered number two, number three is kind of a three-part question. So you need to answer each part. Um, and I'll kind of separate them actually a little bit while I'm here. So who do you think did the most work on the manor? So you're thinking about looking at these people, looking at these houses, who actually was doing the most? You know, so the hardest job, the longest hours. That would be your answer to A. Who do you think benefited the most? So who was getting the reward from that work? Who was getting the money from that work? You know, who was living in the best house because they got the money from that work? Okay, so why don't you take a minute, think about who is, are the peasants, you know, are they really benefiting the most or who is getting the benefit here? And then number C, or letter C, why do you think this is? So, you know, if your answers are not the same, which they shouldn't be, why do you think that somebody is working hard, but somebody else is getting the benefit? So take a minute, pause, make sure you answer number three, all the parts. Okay, your final question that you're gonna answer here is a debatable question. So based on what you have learned about feudalism and manorialism, do you think that they were fair systems? So thinking about, you know, all of the different people involved, right, if you want to go look back at your uh, social class pyramid, do you think that this was fair, right? Thinking about the video you watched, the reading you did, you know, looking at this map of the manor, you know, was this a fair system? Did, was there equal kind of work? and benefits equal rewards for everybody or not? And explain your reasoning of why or why not. I'm actually gonna have it. So make sure you also do why or why not. Okay, when you're done with your final question, so you know, take a couple minutes to do that, pause the video. But when you're done with your final question, you can turn this in and then you're done. Um, remember, this is posted as kind of Thursday, Friday work, you know, but whenever, um, you finish it, just turn it in. So if you're done on Thursday watching this or even earlier if your teacher posted it, just turn this in. You know, if you're watching this on Friday, turn it in whenever you are done. When you are done with this document, you wanna make sure to also do the quizzes that your teacher has posted for the week. Um, it might already be posted or it might not be posted until Friday on your classroom, but just look out for that because we are going to start doing weekly quizzes to check in with you guys about making sure that you've learned the work, um, you know, or seeing where maybe some misunderstandings are. Okay, so this week it'll be like a practice quizzes. We will not grade it, but we do just want to make sure you can all log on and you all understand how it works. We know you use them in math, so hopefully it shouldn't be that hard for you guys to get on there. So make sure you also do your, you know, first quizzes uh, by the end of this week, which will be based on all of the readings we did this week. The fall of Rome, the Roman Catholic Church, and feudalism, manorialism. Okay, other than that, if you're celebrating um, any of the holidays, Passover, Easter, you'll know, have a very good Easter, very good Passover, and enjoy the weekend.